We're free, honey. Play the national anthem. One party state. Different names above the shop fronts, same people control whatever. Which is why, as we all say all the time, it doesn't matter who you get in, they still do the same. Of course they do. Of course the same people are string pulling the whole show. Nothing for me uh, sums up the scale to which we have conceded our power to control our own lives than the world financial system. I love this one, me. Now, one of the great diversion techniques that's used upon us is to make very simple things, which the world financial system is, sound ever so complicated. So what we have, we have um, almost every night on the news, we have um, economists wheeled in front of television cameras, surrounded by computer screens, talking in a language we don't understand. I think it's the Chancellor's M3 policy. I thought the M3 was a motorway. I don't know, something to do with money, apparently. I don't know. It's the public sector borrowing requirement. And so they go on. Oh, God, it's boring. What's on the other side? You know? And so we switch off, understandably. And yet, the world financial system is as simple as can be. It can be summed up in one short sentence. You lend people money that doesn't exist and you charge them interest on it. That's it. Everything else comes out of that. This world is up to its neck in debt on money that has never, does not, and will never exist. And we stand for this. And the great prison that the human race lives in, as I'll come to in more detail when I look at the spiritual reactions to this is the fear of what other people think of them that's the prison we live in that's the great limiter of our potential alongside that when you ask people why aren't you really doing what you really want to do with your life invariably they say because I've got to pay the mortgage mate understandable so the more you can get people businesses and governments in debt the more you can artificially inflate the cost of the basics of life, the more you are pressurizing people to serve your system, be a robot and a clone of it, so that they can earn the money to pay for the basics of life. This is why the world financial system has been designed as a prison. Banks are lending as a matter of course 10,000 pounds and more for every thousand pounds they actually have deposited. If everyone went to the banks tomorrow and took out what they theoretically have deposited there, the banks would be bankrupt so many times it'd be in the Guinness Book of Records. They haven't got it. So when we take out a loan, <laughs> oh, please tell me, Mother, this is not true. They type in to your account the amount you flipping loaned. That's all they do. From that moment, you start paying interest on money that doesn't exist. People say, why is the American government trillions and trillions of dollars in debt? Ridiculous. How could it possibly do that? Very simple when you see how it works. And this is how it works around the world as well. Um, one transaction in one day in America. The American government wants to borrow, say, a billion dollars more than it's actually taken in taxation. Now it's the government. It could actually print its own money interest-free if it chose to. But of course, if it did that, you're removing massive amounts of power from the global banking system, which is controlled by the same people that decide who's going to be president of the United States. So they don't print their own money interest-free. They issue an IOU to a cartel of private banks known laughably as the Central Bank of America, known as the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve System is supposed to be the Central Bank of America, it is a cartel of private banks. The present head of the Federal Reserve is Alan Greenspan, Bilderberg Group Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations, who took over from Paul Volcker, 
who was there at the time of Reaganomics and Thatcherism, Paul Volcker, Bilderberg Group, Trilateral Commission, Council on Foreign Relations. You get the picture. So they issued the government an IOU to this cartel of private banks for a billion dollars. The banks then type into the government's account a billion dollars. That's all they've done. From that moment on, the American taxpayer, via the government, starts paying interest on a billion dollars. Not only that, this IOU is now legally counted as an asset of the banks as if they had a billion dollars in their hands. So now they can lend another ten billion dollars to anyone else that wants to borrow it on the basis of this non-existent money. Now they're lending and getting interest on eleven billion dollars, not one cent of which has ever or will ever exist. And we stand for this. I hear people arguing that, oh God, it's got to be like this, or the, well, the system would collapse. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> hey, this prison wall's coming down. Get the, get, the, get, the, get the bricks out, you know. Do a few repairs, you know. I might be getting out of prison here. Perish the thought here. Now, this is um, not just uh, naval contemplation. This is very, very important to our everyday lives. Gus, if you take one um, product, say a food product, um, and you look at how this system affects uh, the price of it, the farmer growing the food in the field to start with will be borrowing money that doesn't exist and paying interest on it. So the price he charges will have to reflect the fact that he's got to do that. So in effect, what he does costs more. Same with the transport company from the farm to the factory. Now the factory that's processing the food will be um, no doubt borrowing vast amounts of money that doesn't exist and paying interest on it and its cost and its price will reflect that. Same with the transport from the factory to the shop, same with the shop. So by the time we put our hand up on the shelf and pull the product off, the cost of that product is massively inflated compared with what it needs to be because everyone along the line in its production is having to add a little bit to pay interest on money that doesn't exist. Wake me up. This is why we buy three houses to live in one. We do this. I went up um, into the National Westminster Bank in Durham the north of England last year, and I got one of their mortgage leaflets. There it was in black and white. If I take out a loan to buy a house from the National Westminster Bank of £50,000, I will pay them back £152,000. I will buy three houses for the privilege of living in one, and my mortgage payments will reflect that. Therefore, the pressure for me to serve the system, to earn the money to service that debt, will be greater. And what did it say on this leaflet? The National Westminster Bank, we're here to make life easier. <laughs> Great question, that I found anyway, because all this has flipping opened up to me in the last few years. I didn't come out of the womb saying, I, I know it all. I, you know, I can see what's going on. It's just information that's opened my eyes in the last few years. Um, and one of the questions that I've realized um, opens up so much, it's a very simple one, who benefits? Who benefits, for instance, from, from me accepting the version of events about the Oklahoma bombing and many other things that various media organizations and official governments and stuff are telling me um, is the right version of events? Who benefits? Well, who benefited from the Oklahoma bombing? Anyone who wants to centralize um, uh, more, more power in the uh, law enforcement agencies in America certainly has benefited from that. And as Bill Clinton said 24 hours afterwards, uh, we must have an easing of restrictions of the, uh, on the military's involvement in domestic law enforcement. Problem, reaction, solution. And there's so much about that Oklahoma bomb that has never come to light publicly in the main arena that I've seen. And I tell you, the government version of events is a farce and a complete um, lie. Anyway, who benefits from us buying three houses to live in one? Another part of that question. Well, say the house costs 60,000 pounds. The builder who actually creates the thing and makes it a reality, he don't benefit from me buying three. 
He's paid out the 60 grand. He's paid out of me buying one. The guy who um, produces the materials to the builder so he can build the house, he's paid out the 60 grand. Everyone who actually creates the house is paid out of me buying one. One person and one person alone benefits from us buying three houses, sometimes more, to live in one, and that's the guy who's lending us money that doesn't exist and charging us interest on it. And we stand for this. And a few people can't control the direction of the world. Well, we'll give our power away to this extent. It's a doddle. Interestingly, two presidents of the United States uh, in the history of that country have suggested and in some small way begun to introduce interest-free money that wasn't borrowed from the banking cartels and interest paid on it. Those two presidents were Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. They have one other thing in common, you might recall. But perhaps the most grotesque aspect of this whole nonsense of interest on money is what we call third world debt. Third world debt has crucified vast tracts of our fellow humanity and continues to do minute by minute. The third world debt is debt on money that has never, does not, and will never exist. Last time I saw the figures, around 400,000 children in Brazil died from hunger-related disease every year. And at the time I saw those figures, Brazil was the second biggest exporter of food in the world. And the money received from that export, great chunks of it, were servicing interest on money that has never existed. And as one Brazilian official I was reading about recently um, said, most of the money that constitutes the Brazilian debt never left the computer systems of Wall Street. My God, it's time for a turning of the tide. Why can't governments print their own money interest-free and lend it to people interest-free so we buy one house to live in one house instead of three. So we don't have to inflate the price of everything because everyone's got a service interest on money that doesn't exist. Why? Because it's possible. The will is not there. And why is it that no political party that I've come across anywhere in the world that has any chance of forming a government is actually suggesting that that be done? because the same people that control the banking system control the political system in the global one-party state.